they're summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water. And it's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon. The greatest energy source in the universe. Except if I touch it, it would explode and destroy all of New York City, parts of Connecticut and New Jersey. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, commonly known as CERN, has been a scientific powerhouse since its establishment in 1954 in Switzerland by 12 member states. Over the years, it has expanded to include 22 member states and has been responsible for numerous groundbreaking discoveries, such as the identification of the Higgs boson, often referred to as the God particle, and the invention of the World Wide Web. However, CERN's status as a prominent scientific laboratory has also made it a breeding ground for conspiracy theories, particularly in the wake of the activation of the Large Hadron Collider for Run 3 in the past year. Prior to its activation, concerns and fears circulated among the public that the Large Hadron Collider might pose a threat to Earth, given its colossal size and its purpose for colliding subatomic particles at high energies. Fortunately, these fears have not materialized and the collider has not caused any catastrophic events. While CERN's scientific achievements are undeniably groundbreaking, there continues to be a subset of conspiracy theorists who express concerns about the potential dangers associated with the research conducted at the facility. Joining this discussion is none other than the well-known radio host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. What revelations has Jones made about CERN and what are the implications of these claims? Let's delve into the details. Alex Jones is a well-known right-wing American radio host who has gained notoriety for his prolific promotion of anti-government conspiracy theories. His journey into the world of conspiracy theories was significantly influenced by the Waco siege, which occurred at the Branch Davidian complex near Waco, Texas in April 1993. Interestingly, this event unfolded towards the end of Jones's senior year in high school and had tragic consequences, including a substantial fire and a significant loss of lives. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center SPLC, these events served to solidify Jones's pre-existing belief in the relentless advancement of concealed, malevolent forces at play in the world. This turning point in life propelled him from relative obscurity as a public access television personality to national prominence. His rise was marked by the dissemination of paranoid and often unsubstantiated allegations against the US government, coupled with claims of the existence of a shadowy and power-hungry New World Order. Speaking of the New World Order, during a recent podcast hosted by Joe Rogan, Jones delved into the subject of CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, and the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, shedding light on the controversial theories that surround these scientific endeavors. Jones and many like-minded individuals, including himself, subscribe to the belief that CERN is linked to the creation of a new world order. According to their theories, the LHC is not merely a scientific instrument, but is allegedly being exploited as a means of population control and as a component of a broader agenda to establish a one-world government. Jones contends that the New World Order is not a future possibility, but rather a present reality, and he purports that CERN plays a role in enforcing the agenda of this clandestine global order. Before delving into further details of what Jones discussed regarding CERN, it's important to provide some background on the experiments conducted at CERN. You may have heard of antimatter, a substance not commonly found in our surroundings. To study antimatter, it needs to be deliberately created, and this is where CERN comes into play. The outward appearance of CERN's antimatter factory is unassuming, and it's not a place where you would typically associate with the creation of one of the most explosively powerful materials in the universe. Antimatter is essentially composed of elementary particles that are identical to those found in regular matter, with one crucial distinction – they possess an opposite electrical charge. When antimatter and regular matter come into contact, they undergo annihilation, converting themselves into pure energy. Astonishingly, a mere gram of antimatter has the potential to unleash an explosion equivalent to that of a nuclear bomb. In theory, the Big Bang is believed to have generated both matter and antimatter in equal quantities, a scenario that should have resulted in the mutual annihilation of these two forms of matter, leaving nothing behind. 
However, the observable universe we inhabit is overwhelmingly composed of regular matter. At CERN's antimatter factory, physicists engage in the creation of antiprotons and antihydrogens for the purpose of studying their unique properties. These experiments are aimed at addressing fundamental questions about the origins of the universe and the profound mystery of why we exist within it. In the process of generating antimatter particles, physicists initiate the sequence at the proton-synchroton booster, where an accelerated beam composed of approximately 10 trillion regular protons is generated. This proton beam is subsequently directed towards the proton-synchroton. Within the proton-synchroton, the proton beam undergoes further acceleration as it follows a circular path spanning 628 meters. The culmination of this journey is a collision with the target comprised mainly of the chemical element iridium. This collision between the high-energy proton beam and iridium results in the production of approximately four antiprotons for every million collisions that occur. Despite this achievement, these antimatter particles are still far from their final destination. The next stage involves guiding the energetic and chaotically moving antiprotons into the antiproton decelerator. This component of the process employs powerful magnets to not only reduce the velocity of the antiprotons, but also to control their trajectory as they traverse the circular ring of the antiproton decelerator. The antiprotons then encounter quadrupole magnets, which serve the crucial function of compressing them together, overcoming their natural tendency to repel one another. The extra low energy antiproton ring plays a crucial role in the process by significantly reducing the speed of antiprotons, slowing them down to approximately 1.5% of the speed of light. This deliberate deceleration is instrumental in enabling physicists to effectively trap these elusive antimatter particles. In one of the final stages of antimatter production, a vacuum environment is employed. This step is essential because any contact between antimatter and regular matter would lead to their mutual annihilation. Within the vacuum chamber, a specific section is heated to temperatures of around 250 degrees Celsius, 482 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat serves the purpose of eliminating gases and water vapour, ultimately creating a near-perfect vacuum at the centre of the chamber. To maintain the integrity of this vacuum, pressure gauges closely monitor the conditions, ensuring that no inadvertent matter-antimatter interactions occur. However, it's worth noting that even in these controlled experiments, the quantities of antimatter produced are exceedingly minuscule. It would take an astonishing 10 trillion years to generate a mere 0.25 grams of antimatter, a quantity theoretically sufficient for the creation of an antimatter bomb. Alex Jones, however, maintains a perspective that diverges from the official accounts provided by CERN scientists and proponents of the New World Order. He raises concerns regarding the potential weaponization of antimatter, particularly if it were to fall into the wrong hands. Jones suggests that such a scenario would lead to the development of immensely destructive weapons, and he expresses suspicions regarding the intentions of those associated with the New World Order and elite circles, suggesting that they may be involved in the creation of weapons capable of catastrophic destruction. Furthermore, Jones delved into another intriguing aspect at CERN, the presence of a statue depicting the Hindu god Shiva, renowned as the cosmic dancer and the destroyer of worlds. This statue was presented as a gift from India and carries profound symbolism, representing Shiva's cosmic dance that encompasses both creation and destruction. However, Jones has voiced apprehension regarding the statue, interpreting it as a potential symbol of ominous activity transpiring within the confines of CERN. He highlights the fact that Shiva is often associated with the title Destroyer of Worlds, a designation that raises concerns about the nature of experiments conducted at CERN and their possible catastrophic consequences. CERN, on its part, has countered these claims, asserting that the statue primarily symbolizes peace and the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. Despite these assurances, a segment of individuals remains skeptical about CERN's true motives. They harbour reservations, viewing the statue of Shiva as a forewarning, suggesting that CERN might be delving into realms of scientific exploration that are not fully comprehended, thereby potentially unleashing forces with unpredictable outcomes. 
Jones also delved into one of the most prevalent theories regarding CERN, which suggests that the Large Hadron Collider serves as a potential gateway to another dimension or a parallel universe. This theory is rooted in the LHC's capacity to generate extraordinarily high energy collisions, which theoretically could create conditions conducive to the formation of a wormhole or even a rupture in the fabric of space-time. It's important to note that there exists no scientific evidence to substantiate this theory. Nevertheless, Jones pointed out that a considerable number of individuals hold the belief that the LHC is being utilised to open a portal to what is often described as hell, while others speculate that it may be employed as a means of contacting extraterrestrial beings. Additionally, Jones brought attention to CERN's logo. Although it might appear to be a stylized representation of particle tracks, some individuals have drawn a rather unsettling connection, suggesting that it bears an uncanny resemblance to the number 666, traditionally associated with the mark of the beast. It's essential to clarify that this resemblance is considered purely coincidental, yet it has contributed to speculations and conspiracy theories surrounding the nature of CERN's scientific endeavors. So, is there cause for concern regarding CERN and the various aspects it encompasses? Should we heed the warnings put forth by Alex Jones? We invite you to share your thoughts about CERN in the comments section below. Your perspective is valuable to us. Thank you for tuning in and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to show your support by hitting the like and subscribe button.